God is good and all the time. We want to welcome everyone to tonight's service. In opening tonight's service, I want to invite the praise team to come and lead us with the song 184, hymn number 184. Let's all rise. One eight four, Jesus paid it all. Gracious eternal Father in heaven, we come before you this evening thanking you for your mercies and your grace upon our lives. We thank you for allowing us to congregate in this church so that we may seek thy face. May you connect us with heaven. And we also pray, Lord, for the speaker of the day, your servant Moses. Use him, Lord so that these words may draw us closer to thy cross. Blessed be your name forever. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me take the time once more to greet you, saints of God, in the wonderful name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We wish to welcome everyone to this evening's worship service. It is our prayer 
that we, are all, we may all feel at the feet of Jesus. Tomorrow, the Sabbath of the 23rd, there will be a baptism taking place. All those amongst us who wish to join, those that have already registered their names and are ready for baptism, you are asked to attend a meeting that is scheduled to take place immediately after this service in the chaplaincy boardroom. All church board members, you are asked to please meet immediately after tonight's service, also in the boardroom. Those who wish to canvas or to sell Adventist books so that they may sponsor their academics are welcomed to the literature evangelism meeting. That meeting is scheduled to take place on Sunday, the 24th of April at 5 p.m. Literature evangelism on Sunday, the 24th of April at 5 p.m. and in H105. May you all be blessed as we bask together in welcoming the blessed Sabbath hours in Jesus' name. Good evening. Our scripture of today comes from the book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 21. The scripture reads, Many are the plans in person's heart, but it is in the Lord's purpose that prevails. I repeat, Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. The scripture reads, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Amen and be blessed. Before the speaker stands, Dr. Moses Chibirango, we want to welcome a special item from Janet's group. God bless you. Happy Sabbath Church. Yeah, we are going to sing a song in one of the African languages. And uh, the song simply says that this world is not our home. And so we are waiting to be, we have a better place, who is, which is heaven, that we'll all go and have a rest. May you feel blessed and welcome. Quaker, a witch and rock on 
jutaan gibom Winyokoro daring gimon Ayue kanyo daring gimon Ayue kanyo Chunya kwe mos rot ongeyo Daloma ini yudweyo Epikamo na timsik ne kapol ari Tondalo no kapol ari Tondalo no Wakiyo dalam abiro Orengil le manya kacing Orengil le manya kacing Dari gimon ayue kanyo Dari gimon ayue kanyo Can you say amen once again? Amen. I want to glorify our name and the name of the Lord uh, for this great opportunity he has given us once again to come and listen to his word. In a special way, I want also to thank the group and the group here, it's named Janet's Group. Uh, thank you for singing that very song which possibly the Spirit has read you. I didn't get all the words, but I remember this word is not ours. We just go through this word, and our destination is somewhere above. Thank you for that beautiful uh, number. I want to begin with a story. And this story, it also from a student like you. And this student was uh, in a university similar to this university. Uh, in this particular semester, this student registered the course, you know very well, statistics. This was a young, beautiful lady. As you very well know, many of us lecturers, especially, especially when we have challenges also, you know we are human beings, we can come up in the morning and say, unannounced quiz. Sometimes they're on the program, but since it has the name unannounced, we have the freedom to give that quiz anytime, any moment, anywhere. And so it happened that this lecturer in statistics came on that beautiful morning day and decided to give unannounced quiz. Uh, this lady is known to be a good mathematician, but at that day, she came late. And on the board, it was written, unannounced quiz. 
I don't need to explain much because you are student, you have gone through some of these, even we, the lecturers, we have gone through some of these challenges. And the students started the trembling, sweating, and all that, because she knew the implication. Anyway, she got the paper, scribbled around the paper, and the number which was given, she tried, but messed up when the time was over. As usual, students were called upon to take the sheets to the lecturer, and this student was the last. She took the paper when she was even trembling. She handed the paper to the lecturer and said, I'm sorry, I was not well organized, uh, but this is my paper. The lecturer got the paper and they throw it in the dustbin. I can see your faces now turning because it has ever happened to me also. I was not happy with that lecturer who threw my paper away and it was in my face when I had actually tried my best. I can see your face and I can predict what you are thinking about. But this lecturer pulled up another sheet which is empty and he handed it over to the student and said, try it once more. Try it again. And this reminded me, and it's because of this that I came up with this title, One More Chance. One More Chance. Let us pray as we begin. Our Lord and God, and my Father in heaven, we thank you for your kindness and patience with us, that even you give us one more chance. Bless us, and Lord, speak to thy children. Let, they, let them understand this message. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. One more chance. One more chance. It is a story from the Bible, one of the parables Jesus has actually given to our disciples. It's a common, and I know you have heard quite many sermons regarding this one more chance. And I want to read from uh, the book of Luke, Gospel of Luke. I will go to chapter 13 and let us use only four verses. Uh, this is one of the shortest parables and we can find it in those four verses. Uh, the four verses is from verse 6, 7, 8, and 9 and you have the entire parable. I can read and you can follow in your respective versions. I'm using King James Version. He also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Verse 7, then he said to the keeper of the, his vineyard, look, for three years, not one year, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. I'm pausing because the next statement is a strong statement. This is the owner of the vineyard, disappointed with the tree, and the reason is simple, no fruit. And this is what he uttered. He said what? Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? Cut it down. At first I thought that would be the title of the sermon. Cut it down. 
But the other verses as you go down, it changes the message. When you continue down there, here is the caretaker of the vineyard, and he said, but he answered and said to him, Sir, very humble man, Sir, let it alone this year also. The other version, let it alone one more year. Let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. Last verse. And if it bears fruit, well. But if not, after that, you can do what? Cut down. Cut down. But the message is one more chance. This parable is a short one and a very simple one. And each one of us can possibly even understand the meaning. Because we see some characters here. The owner of the vineyard. But before I go into this, I wanted to share with you the vineyard. You know, many times we will say, your servant in a vineyard. What it is? What do we mean? The vineyard, I want to go to the meaning and the implications. It is a very delicate land, cultivated, and on it there are plants, very precious, uh, precious plants, and from these plants we actually get the grapes. And you may have taken this uh, juice from these grapes, some people can make any wine, but I like that juice. And whenever you come to the Holy Communion table, it is still from this vineyard that we get these grapes. I want to share with you because, like me, I know there are others who may not have known these type of plants, uh, the grapes, how they are planted. They take a lot of energy, fertilizer, watering, and all that and they are delicate. If you look at that, you may not have a clear picture, but now, uh, you want me to make it bigger? No, you don't. Uh... Okay. I just decided so that you can see these grapes, and you can recall some of you have paid precious price to buy these grapes, and uh, it doesn't come free of charge. There's effort plant, cultivating, fertilizing, watering, and all that. Those beautiful grapes. I decided possibly, first of all, to understand what it, it is when we talk of this uh, vineyard. Now, the story tells us that there was this big tree, a fig tree. And uh, when we talk of the fig tree, I didn't get the real picture for the fig tree, but a type of a tree which have very big and deep roots. And even when put on the leaves, it tend to have a big shade. So if this tree has big roots, it actually disorganizes the vineyard. And also when it has the leaves, it creates the shade and it can affect the vineyard. Now you can understand why this owner of this vineyard was concerned when he came the third year, the third year, and there was nothing. Now he's wondering why he wasted the soils and the space and the air and the light and the ATC. You can agree with him, the owner, he was absolutely right to cut it down so that the vineyard can have wasting space. Now, when you talk of this vineyard, definitely you know very well that it represents you and me. In other words, let me go to the grapes. Let me go also to the fig tree. The fig tree represents somebody who is wasting space. The fig tree represents somebody who deserves to be cut down. The fig tree may represent someone seated in this very room. 
And this very owner, he say, cut him or cut her down. Because it's the third year. Now when we talk of the year, it's actually a season. A season can be a month, a quarter. It could be a semester. Now coming home, now that we are in this last semester of this academic year, leave alone uh, this coming short period, called what? Inter-semester. Now that we are in the last semester and you are writing exams, the story is referring to you and me. To some of you, this is the third year, and you are remaining with only one year, and the owner of the vineyard say, cut him down. Remove. It could be even her. Three years. But when you talk of the season, it could be two weeks. It could be three days. No fruit. And the owner is looking for that uh, fruit. That's why when we look into this parable, it actually applies to all of us. And uh, maybe I should also mention the caretaker. The owner is God himself. And the caretaker is Jesus Christ, who is advocating for you, saying, leave her, give her, or give him one more chance. And let me dig around, around him, around her. And let me put the fertilizers around this fig tree so that it doesn't waste space, so that when you come next time, you have a fruit. Fertilizing when we come to our university here, we know the fertilizers which we normally use from our farm there, the cow dung. So this particular caretaker say, let me dig around and put the dung, the cow dung, around this fig tree, digging and digging, digging, put dung, dig, dung, dig, dung around the tree so that when you come next time, you get something. So when I say dig, the next is dung, I mean the cow dung. Cow dung is not smelling good. Some of you, you may have witnessed, but there are some people who are used to it. There are some places we have visited and they, they are actually familiar with this because it's common. But still, it may not be so pleasant to someone. And even digging around, that means there was some aspect of cutting the roots so that you can fertilize with the dam. Many times we go through challenges. Many through we can even ask questions, why me? Why me? And the answer is simple. The caretaker is begging the owner for one more chance so that he can dig and dung and dig and dung around to see that you can at least bear a fruit. I want to mention this before we go any further. That as we live through this world, we need and I need or we need to discover God's plan. Discovering God's plans and purpose for our lives is the key. I want first of all to take you again to this book of Jeremiah and the verse is 11. The chapter is 29. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. I want to move through it quickly. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, and not to harm you. Plan to give you hope and the future. Here, God says 
your plans for life, your ideas, your dreams, your desire, your career, your business, what you want to study in UEAB should come after discovering his purpose for your life. All this you may have, yes, he knows even your plan, but all this should come after discovering his, not yours, his purpose. Every individual is purposefully to bear the fruit. And this scripture which our sister read very well, if it is clear to you, Proverbs 19.21, it says, Many, many, you and I and everyone here, many are the plans in man's heart. But it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. You may decide that I will not bear this fruit. You may have a hard heart. You may ignore his calling. You may decide to do your own way. But it is his purpose. Before you were born, before you were created, before you came to this university, there is a plan and a purpose for you to be here. But what is this purpose? Allow me to mention some of these and then we come to the end of this. What is purpose? You know it very well, it's not a new word, but I want to use this uh, particular three points when we talk of the purpose. The original intent of a thing. You know, all of you have mobile phones, good, I don't see them. Uh, but when they were created or manufactured, there was a purpose so that you can call, so you can WhatsApp, so you can, can take a photo, so that all these were planned earlier for this particular. So the original intent for the thing, you could also call yourself a thing. The second, the reason why a thing was made. And the third one, the cause for the creation. So when we talk of this purpose, there are some other aspects we need to look at. And the one, purpose is the reason why a thing exists. Purpose is why you exist. Purpose is why I exist. There is a reason why you exist. There is a reason why I exist. It is the desired result for a thing. It is the source of destiny. Now, I want to look at that destiny. And that's why I liked this uh, group, Janet's group, when they said, our, this world is not ours. We have a destiny. It is the intent of God. May I say the intent of God is the will of God. God has a will for you to live and for me to live. God is pleased when you discover your purpose for life and get busy doing that. Now, our purpose, many of you can say, I came here to study. I remember when we were still in school, we had this uh, another beautiful lady and many boys used to go to her and always could always give their CVs and they promise this and this. And this lady could say one thing, I came to study. According to her, that was the purpose for her to come. And the poor lady, we nicknamed her, I came to study. Because whoever could go to her could get the same result, I came for studies. Now, any one of you can still have the same that I came to study. But God brought you here for the purpose. The purpose is beyond you studying and scoring an A and graduating and get a business and get money and become rich. It's beyond that. Thank you for saying that. Discovering God's purpose in your life, if you do that, 
finding God's purpose for you and for your life equals finding peace and fulfillment in your life. You have seen people, one time I remember there was this magazine I was still very young and I, I used to enjoy a magazine. They used to give us some of these. And there was a very nice picture, a very uh, nice person seated in the sofa set and everything was there. Outside there, there was a vehicle and this person was not happy. I was wondering. There was also a question mark. What the purpose of life? This person was not satisfied at all. And the reason is simple this person has not yet identified and discovered God's purpose in him or her. The goal of life is not to become educated, I've already said so, or to become rich, but what? To be faithful to your calling. You need to take time, I need to take time to find out what is my calling, what is your calling, and if you have not fulfilled that, there's no fruit in you. So when God will move around in the vineyard, you'll find you study here, you say, cut him down, remove him. And this could be your one more chance. A successful person is not a rich person. A successful person is a finished and fulfilled person. Person. Let me again move very fast. I can see you want to go and rest. Uh, purpose, purpose is your life. Until you find why God made you, until I find why God created me, you never have meaning in life. And that's why Ephesians 1 3 it says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realm with every spiritual blessings in Christ. Uh, I always like this song, Count Your Blessings and Name Them One by One. At the end of this, I want to request the, uh, Professor Ebinemi to come and lead us in the, at the end. So Pastor Ebineme and uh, Professor Ebineme, count your blessings and name them one by one. But sometimes these blessings come as a challenge. The Father has already blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places. The only problem and the only issue here is that it is trapped in unseen realms. You may not possibly see it, but you have it. Whatsoever you, need to, whatsoever you need to succeed has already been given to you and it's already available to you, to me. Our spiritual blessings in heavenly places will only come when it sees the reason why it exists. And he again says it exists because God chose you. God chose us. Jesus advocates for us when nothing is produced anyway. That's the good news and that's what made this topic of the title to be turned to not cut down but one more chance because always God has a purpose for you and he will. Purpose can be puzzling but can but keep on pushing. pushing. Purpose with the praise. So I want to say a fruit God is expecting from us is not for us but God's work of salvation. If we get an opportunity which I call another chance to bear fruits, please it's my appeal, it's my humble request because it could be the last chance let us utilize it. This can be an opportunity. It can be a blessing. I want to share with you a metaphor which I used one time when I was still studying for my PhD. I used this tree as a metaphor, opportunity tree. 
in business, we always do business and we are looking for these opportunities. And how do you identify opportunity which I want to use the blessings? It can be from tension. Tension stands for T. T in the tree. Tension. And tension can be stress. It can be a tragedy. It can be an anxiety. Now, if I talk of the tragedy, the way I can express this is death. Sickness, loss of property, and any of that. It can be that kind, but it can bring tension to some of us. And when there's tension, sometime or often, there's this other part, the arrow in the tree, recognition, recognition, which is actually realization. Many times it's after we have gone to calamities, chaotic situations, problems and challenges that we can now realize that yes, we need to turn to our Lord. And then we start evaluation ourselves and assessing, let me come to the Lord. It's my prayer that you and me, we come to this level. Sometimes it can be with that blessing, which can be in terms of the tension, which can be in terms of problem. But God is trying to dig around you. God is trying to put dung around you. I mean Jesus the caretaker. Digging and dung, dig and dung and so on, so that you can come out and realize that you can need, it's the time to bear fruit. If that is the case, please come to this last part of exploitation. Effective use of the resources, the opportunities, and the which is around you. Time is not on my side, but let me say, as we conclude, that God challenges his children, you and me, to change with another chance. And God makes us grateful for his amazing grace. Even though you are not bearing a fruit and you are wasting space, nutrients in the soil, he still say, give him one more chance. We thank God for this gospel of another chance. Remember, Abraham was too old, but he was given another chance to bear a child. Joseph, I mean Jacob, was who? A liar. Remember when he struggled, he struggled with that angel. It was another chance. And he utilized it because he struggled the entire night. Joseph was abused, but was given also another chance. Moses had a stumbling problem. He was given another chance. Gideon was afraid. He was given another chance. Samson had long hair. And again, Womanizer, he was given another chance on that last moment. And he killed thousands and thousands. Rahab was a prostitute, and she was given another chance. David was, uh, had an affair, and he again murdered. You remember that situation? And God gave him another chance. Elijah was suicidal, wanted to kill himself, and God give, gave him another chance. Jonah ran away from God, but he was given another chance. Job went bankrupt, and was given another chance. Peter denied the crust. He was given another chance. The disciples fell asleep while praying. They were given another chance. Remember that short man, Zacchaeus. He was too small, but he was given another chance and he climbed a tree. Lazarus was dead and he was given another chance. Blessings. I want to call upon uh, Professor Ebinemi, to lead us in that one song, even if it's one stanza or so. But as we sing, let us remember that we will have another chance. And thereafter, our pastor will pray for us. But uh, let's get this song. We can all sing and join him for that uh, special number. It's a special number for us, for you. And me. Yeah. All of us 
anyone that wants one more chance from God, we will ask you to stand up. This song is not in our hymn book, in our popular hymn book, but we are going to sing the one we know. Or I'll sing the first stanza here if you can, join me. Then we shall sing, count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Are you there with me? When upon lies below you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one count your blessings what God's done count your blessings name them one by one and it will surprise you what the Lord has count your blessings count your blessings name them one by one Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Before we pray, tomorrow there's baptism. And I didn't know whom I was speaking to, but what I know, someone here is like a fig tree. And what I know, the Lord has called us to speak to that one person. That you have this one more chance. Next time we may be here in August, but you cannot tell who is next. It could be me. At the beginning of last semester, we lost someone. And even the other semester, we lost. How many days are remaining for you? It could be this one more chance. I therefore want to call upon, allow me to make this call. Uh, even if you are baptized, and you feel you want to utilize this one more chance to bear the fruit, I want you to make a step forward because I'm going to request our pastor to come and pray for you and pray for me so that we can utilize this one more chance. And if this message was actually talking to you and you feel you should utilize it, even entering into the waters, you can register with the chaplain's office. But for now, let's make a step forward. And I want to invite our pastor to pray for us for this one more chance. Thank you. If there's somebody who'd want to get that chance, please come in front as we pray. You either want to be baptized or there's something you know that you'd want God to give you one more chance. Don't remain in the congregation. Here you come in front. We'll pray with you. I think it is clear, loud and clear. If there's something in your life and you know it and you want God to give you one more chance, you know. Don't pretend by standing there. Just give God a chance and come in front. And if you want to be baptized, tomorrow will be the last one. Then you also come and God of the second chances will give us that chance. Thank you very much, uh, uh, one of our elders in this church for bringing it loudly and clearly. I know the struggle and the change. So this is what God wanted, not the other one that you are preparing. So we want to thank God for this one. Now we want to pray, just before we pray, I'm saying those, if you want God to give you another chance, you move. Now those who have moved, is there anybody who would want to be included of the number that we have, seven, which we are going to baptize tomorrow, you want to be included in that number? Let me see your hand only. You are here, but you want to be included in the number of tomorrow. The water is getting ready. Is there anybody who has not been included and you are here standing? 
please, if you are here, don't go because we are soon going to present those names so that they'll be presented here before we baptize you. Let's pray. Loving Father, we thank you. One more chance. One more year. One more opportunity. Because you don't want anybody to be lost. You want all of us to be saved. Lord, we have heard you speak to us through your servant loudly and clearly. There are things we have done in our lives that if it's not for your grace, we know to be alive. Today, Lord, because of that chance, we have come before you to forgive, to energize, to restore, and to bring us back to you once more time. Give us the opportunity to fulfill the purpose by which you brought us in this university. To live, to study, but to acquaint ourselves with you so that we live a fulfilled and a peaceful life. Now may your spirit and may your forgiving power and may your enabling be with us now as we continue in the holy hour of the Sabbath. Give us rest, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. And if you want to be baptized, let us know. Board members who are here, we are looking for about 10. That's our quorum. Please do not go. We want you to meet up. And those who are going to be baptized, also meet us there. God bless you. Enjoy the Sabbath day. Thank you.